In this chapter, we're actually going to go through and display those uh, robot mugs that we have created. We're going to display them for purchase to our customers using a content type called product display. First thing you'll notice on the screen here are those three example product nodes that were created that once upon a time um, had add to cart forms for the example products one, two, and three. Those products were deleted, so now we just have these nodes that don't actually contain any product data at all. Uh, the nodes still exist because as we mentioned, product data is separate in Drupal Commerce from the node that is used to display the product. In fact, you don't have to use nodes at all um, if you did not need display pages for your products or if you use some other type of display such as a views-based display or panels-based, you may not even have these nodes at all. Um, in our case, we are using them. Commerce Kickstart does use them by default and uh, I could delete them out and just sort of wipe my node database um, and start from scratch, but I'm just going to end up repurposing product one, two, and three nodes to display my Lullabot mugs instead. So what we're going to do is go look at the content type for these products so that we can see what makes a, a content type a product display content type. We find that information under the structure menu. Here I have a content types menu item, and you'll see that aside from the article and basic page content types that get created in a standard installation of Drupal, we also have this product display content type. Looking at its fields, we can see that the only thing unique to this is that it has a product reference field. It's right here called product. And this product reference field uses an autocomplete text field where I can, on an add or edit page for this content type, type in a SKU or a product title to join one of my products to this particular piece of content for display. Now the title and body can be anything you want and the product reference field will link it to the actual SKU, to the actual um, particular product in the back end and, and display as an add to cart form and bring in from the product the price and image data uh, that we added whenever we created those products on the site. So again, because the separation between the definition of the product and the display of the product, this, uh, this field is able to pull in dynamically the, the necessary data from the back end without us having to administer product data through our product display content. Um, so let's just go ahead and edit the existing product display nodes that we have to point them to actual products now um, that we've added to the site. So I'm going to close the overlay and go edit first of all product one. This is going to reference LB mug one. So if I scroll down to my product reference field, I can begin typing in the SKU and see the matches. Here I can just click on my green man mug. I'm going to go ahead and retitle this node so it's actually the green man mug and just give a brief description. Okay, so now we have LB mug one. When I hit save, we'll see the updated teaser list that includes the title, the image, the price, and an add to cart button for the customer to go ahead and purchase one of our fabled line of LB Robotics mugs. So now I need to go ahead and repeat this process for each of the mugs that we added in the last chapter. Now what's happening when I fill out these product reference fields is that this piece of content as it's created will just store in it um, a numeric reference to the product data on the back end. It's not bringing any of this product information like the price or image into this particular piece of content itself. It just maintains a reference from one to the other, kind of like the old node reference field from Drupal 6 or, or other sorts of reference fields like that. And within Drupal Core and Drupal 7, of course, there's the taxonomy term reference field, which is functionally equivalent to what we're doing here. That's why we're able to repurpose these previously used product displays to reference our new product data without having to create new ones from scratch. So now that I have finished repurposing my three existing product displays, I need to create two new ones for my final two mugs. To do that, I'm going to have to go to Content, Add New Content, and then click on Product Display. Let's go ahead and establish the reference one more time. This will be Mug 4, the Red Man Mug. Give it the same title and save. Another way to add new product displays in a Commerce Kickstart install is just to use the shortcut that we've created. Over here on the left-hand side of the screen, there's an add product display shortcut that will jump straight to the node add form for the product display. So here we have the laser your face mug 
and we will be done adding product displays. Notice that the image here is bigger than it appears on the teaser list. This is because we have edited the uh, display settings for the product display content type to use the thumbnail size in the teaser list and the medium size in the actual full page display. The add to cart button of course appears in each. And this is kind of interesting. See that a default installation of Commerce Kickstart has the price above the description on the teaser. On the full page it actually had the price above the add to cart button. I personally like the price to be next to the add to cart button and I think we'll go through and fix this in Commerce Kickstart. But if you wanted to fix or sort of fiddle with the display settings yourself, the way to do that for your product display nodes is going to be through that structure menu again. So let me close my shortcuts list and come back to the structure menu. You'll see in my content types listing a manage display um, operation for my product display content type. I want to go here and adjust the order of the price and, and body fields and everything for my product displays so that the product price always appears next to the add to cart form. Notice that I don't have a full list of settings for the product price and product image like I do for the body and, and product reference field. That's because the product price and image is just field data that's coming into the context of this product display through that product reference field. I can't actually configure all the settings here. All I can do is reorder them relative to one another. So now with my price right above my add to cart form, I'm going to go ahead and save and then go repeat this process for my teaser tab. I want the product price to appear right above the add to cart form. Hit save. And when I close my overlay, I will see in the teaser list that the price field is now right next to the add to cart button and that that same orientation will be used on the full page display for my products. So I now have five products defined on the back end with five coordinating product displays on the front end that my customers can use to browse my product catalog and add these products to my shopping cart. It may be that for a site that's selling a lot of products or diverse and varied products that you will want to simplify this product and product display creation so that your store administrators aren't having to go through and click you know, 100 different things to list each product and to, and to perform full product catalog updates. We'll cover that material later, but there are modules that exist to create both a product and product display at the same time, administer them together, edit product prices in bulk and, and, and everything else that you've come that you would expect out of a more robust sort of product uh, catalog administration system. But Drupal Commerce by default out of the box is pretty trimmed down because we don't assume that you're going to have any particular product needs. We try to make as few assumptions as possible in Drupal Commerce about what types of products you're going to be selling or how you're going to administer them. Now this whole process was kind of tedious. We had to create five separate products, five separate product displays, and make sure we reference them all properly. Um, what we'll explore in the future are ways to use contributed modules or different configurations to create and manage our products and product displays all at once. For now, what we've done suffices and it shows the standard creation process for Drupal Commerce out of the box. Thank <laughs> you.